Well, I'm about to say hello. Today we're back on the uh, electric motors front. We've got the T Mo 450 again here, and we're going to try and cover a, a bit of an unanswered question, which is is this thing powerful to actually power a proper keel boat? So, not a dinghy, which is what it's intended for. And with JC, international legendary skipper, the man himself, and he's going to come and test us with us. We've got a what's the boat we're on? So we're on a Beneteau First uh, 24, brand new. I think it's from 2022, and uh, we, it's it's a nice, yeah, kind of racing boat. So it's very light, so it weighs around one ton. So it will be a good test to see uh, if we can go through uh, with this vacuum cleaner that you have on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, yeah. So big thanks to Trisail here in where we are, Puerto Banús, in the Banus south Marbella. of uh, yeah, Marbella area, south of Spain. Big thanks to those guys for lending us the boat and trusting us with this um, vacuum cleaner, as yeah. the man says. Let's see if she works, <laughs> eh? Hey? All right, let's see how this works. That should be more, I guess. Center. That's on. Looks like it's strong enough. And now we get the engine on. Of course, you don't want to let it fall in the water. But normally, this should float as well when you have a floaty on it. I'm not sure we have that floaty on it. Got a feeling we're just going in the channel of Venice now and moving a boat forward like this. That should do it, I think. So that's just attached. I think we need to open this to get a bit more grip on it. Okay, not too much, <laughs> as I can tell. It's good to know, so not too much. And I think the red mark indicates actually until when it should go. Initial install go, JC. Yeah, I it mean, was I, quite interesting. I could have helped you out here and I, I could have, you know, showed you how it went, but I thought, see how you work it out. So okay. it's very straightforward. So quite this, okay. The only thing we have to close here, this is the uh, charging port. Yeah. It's got an O-ring in it, so we've just got to turn that yeah. around and she's Yeah, water. you need to know, and I think it's good to know as well that you cannot take out the tube uh, further than the red mark. And I didn't know that. <laughs> but yeah, I guess you only know by doing it. You know that now. Yeah. Then Superb, right, we'll get ready to go. Just before we go any further, we have no idea if this is going to work at all, have we? No. <laughs> and we've got like uh, over 20 knots out there, so uh, it's going to be a good test. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. I'll yeah. pull the bow line off, you fender off here, yes. and we'll see what happens, eh? All right, buddy. Hey! We are. Are you on standby? Also sailing or just train motors? Also sailing. Both. Okay, JC. Good. All right, we're free. So we're pushing the boundaries here. So here's a quick disclaimer. First off, don't try this. Timo do not recommend their 450 for boats of this size or type. In fact, it's only spec for a 2.5 meter boat. But when, you know, given the chance for a bit of fun, we couldn't resist giving it a try to see how far we could push it. We've got a one kilowatt Tokido on standby. Let's see what happens. So this boat weighs a ton, you say? Yes. I'm happy it doesn't weigh more than that with this engine, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think what will be interesting as well is going upwind. We'll see how it goes, because now we're literally about to turn around and go straight head on into the wind, yeah? Yeah. Let's see if I can figure out how fast we're going. I've got it on my uh, watch here, 1.4, 1.5. And I think uh, when we need to go upwind, let's see how much torque uh, really we get to uh, get yeah. the boat, the, the bow into the wind. As soon as we get that uh, 20 knots that we're going to feel in the harbor entrance, it's going to be a different story. One thing's for sure. I'm quite looking forward to just taking a um, one no, of these. Me neither. Uh, me neither. I think listen. they're a bit like dinghy sailing. I hope so. You might want to think about a reef to be relaxed. Yeah, we've got about 20 knots of wind right on the nose, which can't be helping. There's very little swell, though. I mean, we're in a harbor. I think it's fair to say that it does the job. Just for the harbor, but I think when you want to go into the wind to get your sails up, it no might chance. be lacking a little bit. But again, it's not designed for that. It's designed for people to take their shopping out on smooth anchorages. What you, what you could do is sail in into protection of the wind, sail into the harbor, and then it's perfect to use your, uh, yeah, your like, outboard engine. Yeah, when, when you use like dinghies and stuff like that, like as in rubber dinghies, not sailing dinghies. Yeah. Dinghies themselves 
we've had speeds of what three and a half knots and the likes with two of us in there and, and our dinghy's right, a, yeah. our dinghy's a heavy old lump as well so i'm pretty sure with one person and you'd be looking at four and a half maybe even five knots with it but this is right on the limit and we probably shouldn't be doing this test. And we shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I think uh, we should get the um, uh, outboard engine on. We don't want to risk <laughs> a boat that is not ours. No, no anchor on it. Not the way to do it, mate. Mm -hmm. So once we leave this port, we've got a load of rocks all around us. So I think the right move here is to say, I think it's not a, a good look idea. At that, um, the harbor entrance is very high wall for this boat. See that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, go over here. What? Go over here. Yeah. yeah if we tie a bow line on, then at least we'll just wind vein off it. But we don't have a rope, no? No, oh, we'll saw a rope out. There's a boat, mate. There's loads of them. Exactly. Like, look, this is now going into the wind. And we're doing it now 0.9 knots. Imagine with a bit of waist. OK, so we've uh, decided to abort this. We've just left the, the harbour. I think it's fair to say that it, it works, but it, it's not a good idea at all. This is a brand new boat. It's not our boat. We've got to take care of it. We're just going to tie up and uh, go and have some fun in a Benefto first. Just get an ex extra fender on to be sure. So mission aborted, the 450 is not enough. We're going back to 1,000 watts, so one kilowatt of power. This is the Torquedo. It's a the Travel 1103. It's kind of the, the one that's been around for years and it's sort of innovated itself a little bit over the years. There's another one that Timo do. It's the 1000, it's their direct compared to this. I think it's a bit more innovative and a bit more powerful, but we don't have it. So I know that this works and uh, it's what Tricell use all the time. So let's pop this on, accept the feet. Mm. And go and have a good time. Oh yes. And magnetic doodle, we just need a battery. So I always think that the Torquedo things, obviously they were the first, but I, I don't mean to be rude, but it's about time they uh, picked up the game a little bit. I mean, it works, but all these exposed connections, another IP67, the thing, whole thing's waterproof. Got the old thing here, it tells you your speed, your autonomy, how long you've got left, etc., and your GPS and all that palava. But I don't know, I just sort of look at it along the lines of every other sort of marine engine and just think it's hardly like it's built to last what do you reckon jc i think so too even the connections you know very plastic very difficult to get in and i'm not really sure if that's really waterproof to be honest anyway that, that's what i'm thinking on so the positive note problems. we've got a thousand watts of power let's see if it works eh? so and the power with the 20 knots we have it would be brilliant right cool so let's put the timo down below jc you're gonna have to wow us with your um Mm. Sailing skills instead of this motor, my friend. Let's see, my friend. <laughs> it's the first time I'm using this boat. <laughs> oh, the excuses! Oh, yes. The pouring out already. Okay, so let's figure out what we got. What do you want up first, main or? I'm just thinking, like, let's put the jib on first, get out of uh, the harbor mouth with the rocks. Yeah. And then uh, we, we go a bit further where we have more space to put the main up. What do you think? Yeah. Do you want to go a full jib or? Yeah, but do, wait for a second. Because uh, we'll be probably head on. It's full throttle, eh? it goes at 2.5 knots. So it's 2.5 knots full throttle on a one kilowatt motor. There you go. So I think it was doing quite well. I think it was not bad at all. Yeah. Like if you would get the 1,000 uh, watt, you would do the same, no? Yeah, well, clearly it's not that much right. quicker. The confidence is there though to go and hit some waves. So you can see your autonomy on there. So I think we had 33%, is that right? 24 now. It's not strong, man, at all, the engine. I wouldn't, don't like that engine at all. No, it doesn't give you confidence going out into a bit of a bouncy sea. I must be honest, I'm not convinced. I'd, I wouldn't want to put my boat at risk in any more than this, to be honest. I wouldn't do this at all, like with this engine, to be honest. Oh, these guys do it every day though with the torpedo, yeah. don't they? Because we're moving two knots, 2.5 knots. So just out of curiosity, if you go straight into the waves, let's see what it does to the speed. 1.9 already. Now it's on 18% battery. Fills me with confidence, we're on 18%. Sorry? That confidence is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. 
Not really, no. I think it's time to get a jib out soon, eh? Take the jib out if you can. Yeah. Wow. First thing I'll say about the Beneteau 24. The tow rails finish about a foot too short. Buddy, this is not really good, huh? We're not making any progress, mate, and the engine is not helping at all. And I just see rocks there. We're down to 14% as well. Okay, so, five knots, mate. How many percent? We've got 11, mate, so I think we should put a tack in, then if it doesn't work, we'll spin around. I think you can make, we can make it. You ready? Going. Okay, leave it, leave it a bit, yeah, okay, good. Now take it to the other. I'm not going to use the engine, man. I'm going to put it on neutral. Okay? No, what yeah, do you think? pretty good. I think she's going well. Is the engine off now, is it? I don't know. No, it's not off. But it should definitely go off because we are on 10%. Let's put it off. Yeah. All right. No, what do you think? Yeah, the boat's sailing beautifully, I think. So we're doing nearly four knots on just the jib, so... 10% left on the motor. We should prepare the second read. Okay, boat is not doing anything. Let out a little bit of uh, jib. Yeah. You just leave the outboard on. Yeah, you, you can put it up. You can tilt it. If you tilt it, you need to take the things off though. Yeah, really? Yeah. Ah, that's annoying. So with these conditions, I would just leave it like this. Yeah, I think the, the big problem with the torpedo is once you tilt it up, then the, the tiller ends up in a position where it can yeah. fall out. It'll be hanging from its cables. The good thing is we can enter the harbor with, uh, with the jib. No, she's good, but I think yeah. straight away, like a lesson in sailing on electric engines is being learned straight away. Like we left with what, 30, 34%? Yeah. And we only had to do, how far is it out of that harbor? That's, that's a quarter of a mile? Like in meters, there will be what, 300 meters? Yeah, but amazing that it's gone from like, it's lost 20% of power on the Torquedo and we actually only did 200 meters on it. Yeah, is it? Yeah. Let's try to get that main up. Yeah, that's the one. Sorry. Two reefs and a full Genoa, you know, huh? I'd imagine she's quite mainsail driven, so she might yeah. feel better on a one reef on the, on the main and then a bit more taken. You can already the jib. feel that she's a bit overpowered now. Yeah, I mean, a bit out of the jib, though. What we can do is put a little bit of uh, uh, tension on the back step and on the bank. Yeah, I the only thing about this 24 is I think this grip position is completely wrong, mate. It should that? be way lower, lower. Yeah, they're in the right place. Be nice to know how much wind we had. <laughs> yeah. Mind you, that's going to come off, mate. <laughs> we don't have that, no? No, we don't have that. Six, six knots. Should we tack around? Yeah, six is. Right. Three, two, one, tagging. <laughs> nice, slowly. Very nice. Nice one. Nice tech, mate. Beauty. I think that's us coming in the harbour now. And of course, the wind died coming in and the electric engine was nearly out of puff. I'm not entirely struck on electric engines after this experience. We're Same literally here. coming in on 2% of power, which is a, a little bit 
close it's a bit to, uh, close to <laughs> exactly yeah, especially when you still need to uh, go stern two uh, in your uh, yeah and when we were coming into the harbor there was um there's obviously a lot of rocks around entrances to harbors and the likes very little wind we couldn't use the jib we had the jib out to get us in here the motor running and we're still only managing like two knots so the tide, and not the tide, there's no tide here, but the, the swell, I think. There's and a current the, though, yeah. And the current and the choppy sort of nature was pushing us the wrong way, I think, so. Now we are 1%, have a look at this, unbelievable. 1% and we still need to go in reverse there. So now we're obviously uh, tickling over slowly. On a positive note, we've got no wind and the team all will pull us back. <laughs> exactly, yes, <laughs> that's true. You should get it out actually, mate. Well, just in case. Yeah, just yeah. in case, exactly. Are you planning a disaster like? Got one percent, man. <laughs> it went down from was it ten percent down to two and one percent in a very uh, short time. Well, right? these things last forever. So, big thanks to JC and Dennis here at TriSail for letting us use this lovely first twenty-four. Ooh. Absolute belter of a boat. Definitely a right sporty thing. Definitely come out, check these guys. Go and do some sailing with them as well. They can take you out, do some regattas, teach you up, get you up to speed so you can go and go out and win some regattas like good old JC here. So what do I think about it? The boat itself, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant for sports boat use and now they're kind of flying around. You've probably got a quite a good bit of interior space as well. You could have a snooze in and all that kind of stuff. Would I want to take it into a big sea? Not me. Other people, yeah, they might, not me. But as far as trailer sailors go, awesome. Torpedo engine on the back, one kilowatt, seems to do the job. Not convinced, I've got to be honest. Did try the Timo one as you saw. Definitely not convinced that this is the right motor for this boat. But check out the other stuff we did with the Timo as well. I think the Timo is definitely a winner for outboards and it's lightweight and sort of compact size, makes it easy to sort of put anywhere. And one of the things that we really did find with the, the Timo and the likes was People say, where am I going to keep it? Because it's actually really easy to store. So everyone thinks, I'm going to put it down below. But when did you ever put an outboard down below? Anyway, that's it for this week on Sail Hub. If you check it out, like and subscribe. We've got a whole bunch more with electric motors coming your way and a whole bunch of other stuff with sailing in general. So check it out, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>